My name is Andrew DeVoe Thomas. I'm one of the doctors um, working and specialising in HIV, and I'm uh, working at the moment in Gloucestershire, where I've been for the past 10 years. I've been working in the field of HIV for nearly 20 years, and throughout that time, there's been amazing changes. The changes that have happened are the introduction of HIV therapy, so no longer is it a fatal infection, um, it's treatable. But probably the second less trumpeted change has been the ease and range of treatment that is available to us. Initially, when treatment was first introduced, it was very much like a, a tightrope walk. There was anxieties constantly, would it fail? If it failed, what would we do then? Because there was very little backup treatments available to, to us now. And sadly, some of the drugs had, were very side effect prone. So they made people feel unwell. They had restrictions on um, diet. So some had to be taken with food, some had to be taken on an empty stomach. And it, that could mean that people were taking pills five times a day that had a lot of side effects. Modern therapy is very different. We have nearly 30, a choice of nearly 30 different drugs to choose from. They're used usually in combinations of three, and often um, they come in as, as combination tablets. So it can be as simple as one tablet that might contain three drugs taken just once a day. The aim is to use our experience to tailor the treatment so the patient suffers no side effects at all, and that re is a very realizable um, gain for the majority of patients because if they are suffering in any way, then we've got the ability to tweak. Frequently, we've got the ability to, to tweak so there are no side effects. So that's the one big change. And together with that comes the second one, that patients can, if they're able, and it does take a bit of practice, they can forget about their HIV because the HIV medications eradicate detectable virus from their circulating bloodstream. So assuming that they're able to comply with their HIV drug therapy and to take them on time and not miss tablets, they, it is perfectly normal to expect to have no detectable virus in the bloodstream. And therefore, there is, that should remove the anxiety and fear that used to exist that the individual was going to become ill at any moment. You know, most of my clinic sessions are dealing with congratulating patients on how their immune system is getting ever stronger and ever stronger. And the majority of my patients have a CD4 lymphocyte count, so the certain group of white cells that are destroyed by the HIV virus. They have levels which would be normal in somebody who does not have an HIV infection. So they're within the normal range for the general population. And that's often when they started from a very low point. And that is uh, very gratifying. And I think for, for patients, many of them see the, the tablets as a reminder of their HIV infection. And I would argue it's allowing them to forget their HIV infection. If they didn't have the tablets, then every single day they need to live in fear because they don't know what's going to happen. But by controlling the virus, they need to have no anxieties. And the biggest tragedy for people who are infected with HIV has historically been the awareness and realization that they can represent a threat to people that they are um, sexually contacts of them. So the people who they are in loving relationships with, they now represent a threat to them. And the anxiety that they can never live or expect others to accept them now because they hold a, a potential threat to them. And that was a real tragedy. Within the speciality, we knew from very early data that people with a low viral load were far less infectious um, than people with a high viral load. So that was people who weren't taking HIV treatment, but those individuals who were HIV positive, but the virus levels were quite low in the hundreds or thousands, or just a few thousand copies per mil of blood. The, their trend, the transmissibility was not as high as in those who had very high viral loads. The, that experience um, and 
knowledge expanded and uh, in 2008 a group of eminent Swiss physicians, some of them professors, made a very bold statement that we refer to as the Swiss statement where they said for individuals who are in a heterosexual relationship where one partner is HIV positive and the other is HIV negative, they should not have anxieties about transmitting HIV in a number, assuming a number of uh, specific things were satisfied. And those were that the individual with HIV had been on HIV treatment for at least six months and their virus was undetectable for those six months. Assuming that that individual took the medication reliably and assuming that there were no other sexual infections within that relationship. So that related, their, their statement related to vaginal sex and it was a very bold and brave statement. Uh, I took great pleasure in sharing their, uh, that information with the individual patients that I was seeing because I, I felt it was the only thing that, we'd, that had ever been really done that could allay um, their anxieties. But I did, I was sort of bound by what still remains the standard advice is to continue to use condoms where you can. Um, what has changed is, and is changing, and will change probably at the end of the current study, which is um, going to happen in 2017, is the early results of the partner study. The partner study um, took individuals from various European um, sentinel sites. Um, it's a large study, it's a multi-center uh, trial, where they were looking to uh, individuals who had been on treatment for six months, who had partners who were aware of their HIV status, who themselves were HIV negative, and who were willing to um, enter into this trial where two or three times a year, they go along to a clinic and fill in a questionnaire. And that questionnaire relates to the type of sex they're having, the frequency of sex. Um, and um, it studies really how many transmissions occur in these stable relationships. The study is ongoing, but uh, the thing that has really changed is the realization that the infectivity of those who are on treatment and undetectable is far less than was ever realized. And this is a big study that is going to um, really pin down on the figures, true risks. The There are many hundreds of patient years of follow-up extending to men who have sex with men and extending to men who have receptive anal sex even with ejaculation and the the results and mathematical models show that there as is yet there's a calculated there's a 95 percent confidence that the risk of having receptive anal sex with a man who is HIV positive but is on treatment and is can, takes his treatment is does not exceed about three percent per year. So you may say, well, three percent per year—that's a, a quite frightening level. But the exciting thing about the partner study—it's an ongoing study, and so exactly where that three percent—that's the upper level of risk calculated at the moment—will go. It's going to get lower. It doesn't alter the standard advice. The advice is to use condoms. Um, however, in the event of a condom accident, there is no longer the need in somebody who is undetectable on treatment and good at taking their treatment for their partner to obtain post-exposure prophylaxis, which used to be quite difficult to obtain and it would be a drug you'd need to take for a month. So the advice now is not to obtain that in those circumstances where the individual is on treatment. And really, the exciting thing that I hope this study will allow is for more people to get tested. The fear is if you're tested, then you know you're a threat to others and you don't want to hurt other people. So, but it alters your whole life. Whereas I think this partner study, when the full report is out, is going to radically change the um, image of HIV for those who have it, for those who are infected, and then as a second wave, will be the public perception of uh, those who's, who are involved. So Alison Rogers at uh, University College Hospital is the lead 
for um, the study in the UK, and it's supported by the um, big research network, um, clinical trials network here in the UK. So exciting times and a very positive message um, for those who are infected with HIV that, uh, that there is a lot of hope and reason to expect to lead a normal, healthy life.